Nursing assistance, elimination and bowel elimination. Elimination waste products. During the conversion process of food into energy through metabolism, waste materials are created. Body eliminates waste in various forms. There's two main forms, the urinary system, where it filters waste products from blood to form urine, and the digestive system, where it separates solid waste from food to form feces, creating waste products. Individuals' attitudes toward urinary and bowel elimination. Individuals' attitudes. Elimination issues. There are physical and mental difficulties. It's a very private activity. Most will be extremely embarrassed if they need assistance. They may have difficulty due to lack of privacy. There is a loss of sense of dignity. Afraid to drink too much water due to incontinence. They don't want to bother staff to ask for help. And of course, there's feelings of embarrassment and shame if they soil their clothing. Assisting with elimination. Some patients or residents may need only a steady arm to lean on during their trip to the bathroom. Others will need more help. The bathrooms in many healthcare facilities have special features that make them easier for people with physical disabilities to use. Modifications allow many patients or residents to use the toilet in the bathroom with very little assistance from the nursing assistant. Assisting with eliminations too. Assisting with elimination and elimination equipment. Some patients or residents may not be able to get out of bed at all or they may be too weak or ill to walk to the bathroom. These people may need to use the bedside commode, uh, bedpans, and urinals. Elimination equipment bedside commode. The bedside commode consists of a chair frame with a toilet seat and removable collection bucket. For a person who is able to get out of the bed but who is not able to walk to the bathroom, a bedside commode can make toileting easier. Equipment, bedpans. A bedpan is used for elimination when a person is unable to get out of bed at all. A woman who cannot get out of bed uses a bedpan to urinate and for bowel movements. A man who cannot get out of bed uses a bedpan for bowel movements and a urinal to urinate. A fracture pan, which is wedge-shaped, is placed underneath the person's buttocks with the thin edge toward the person's back. Fracture pans and bedpans. Warm a metal bedpan before offering it to the patient or resident by wrapping the bedpan in a warm towel or running water around or over the seat and then drying it before use. Apply a small amount of powder to the rim of the bedpan to make it easier to slide under the person. Provide as much privacy as safely and as possible. Fracture bed pans. Useful tips. If a person's condition allows, raise the head of the bed. Promote more of a natural elimination position. A man uses a urinal when he cannot get out of bed to urinate. Urinals. To urinal, the man puts his penis in the opening of the urinal. If the man is very weak or disabled, you may need to place his penis inside the opening of the urinal for him. Difficulty with normal elimination. A patient or resident may have difficulty with elimination if elimination occurs under conditions that are not private as the person would like. In a healthcare facility, people may share a bathroom or use a bedpan only while being separated from other people in an another room by a curtain. Difficulty with normal elimination. Feelings of embarrassment and shame are made worse when patients or residents accidentally soil themselves, their bed linens, their clothing with both urine or feces. This might be due to the effects of medications, being in a strange place, reluctance to ask for help, and physical or mental disabilities. Promoting normal elimination. Kindness, empathy, and a professional attitude can go a long way toward easing the patient's or resident's embarrassment. Being in a healthcare facility can also change a person's normal elimination patterns, which can cause health problems. The most effective method of treating urinary and bowel problems is to prevent them from happening in the first place. 
promoting normal elimination. Encourage plenty of fluids unless the doctor has ordered against them. Answer call lights promptly to prevent people from attempting to get out of bed themselves and risk falling. Encourage the person to call when he first feels the urge to void and offer people the chance to eliminate frequently. Promoting normal elimination. Provide for privacy and comfort. The sound of running water may help some people to urinate. If a person is having difficulty moving his bowels, do not rush the person. Regular exercise and foods containing insoluble fiber help promote regular bowel movements. The most effective method of treating urinary and bowel problems is A. Encourage the use of the bathroom every two hours. B. Be alert to subtle changes. C. Encourage plenty of fluids. D. Preventing them from happening. D. Preventing them from happening. The most effective method of treating urinary and bowel problems is to prevent them from happening in the first place. Encouraging consistent use of the bathroom, being alert to subtle changes, and encouraging adequate fluids are tips to help prevent problems from happening. The contents of a person's urine or feces can provide a doctor with clues about the person's overall health status. A nursing assistant may be able to obtain a urine or stool specimen sample for the laboratory study. Obtaining a urine and stool specimen. Before collecting any specimen, urine, feces, or any other body fluid, ask yourself the following questions. Do I have the right person? Do I have the right lab slip? What method is used to collect the specimen? Do I have the right type of specimen container? Is a specimen container properly labeled? What is the correct date and time? What storage and delivery method must I use? Obtaining a urine and stool specimen. Always remember to wear gloves when assisting with specimen collection and when handling the specimen containers. Obtaining urine and stool specimens urinalysis. Urinalysis or examination of the urine under a microscope by chemical means is a commonly used diagnostic tool for the healthcare setting. Substances found in the urine during urinalysis can help the doctors diagnose kidney disease, uh, other metabolic diseases, and infections. To perform urinalysis, a urine specimen must be obtained. For routine urinalysis, the person is asked to urinate directly into a specimen cup. If, if possible. If it's difficult, the person can urinate into a specimen collection device. The person must not have a bowel movement at the same time the urine is being collected. Do not place toilet paper in the collection device. Either of these actions will change the urinalysis results. When collecting a specimen, ask the nurse about the storage and the delivery method. Obtaining urine specimens, midstream clean catch urine specimen. This is a method of collecting urine that prevents contamination of the urine by the bacteria that normally live around the urethra. A midstream clean catch urine specimen is usually ordered when the doctor suspects a urinary tract infection. When a midstream clean catch is taken, urine specimen is requested by the doctor and the person is asked to clean the area around their urethral opening with a special cleansing wipe. The urine flow is started, then stopped, then started again. The urine sample is collected from the restarted flow in a sterile specimen cup. A type of routine urine testing involves dipping chemically treated paper strips into the urine sample. The chemicals on the paper react with certain substances that may be found in the urine. It causes the chemical blocks on the paper to change color if these substances are present in the urine. The paper is then compared with the color chart that comes with the strip. Obtaining stool specimens. Stool is analyzed for the presence of blood, pathogens such as parasites or bacteria, fat and other things that are normally not found in the feces. If a stool sample is needed, the person should be notified in advance so that the specimen can be collected when it becomes available. Ask the nurse if there are any particular collection methods that should be used. Obtaining a stool specimen. Stool can be collected in the bedpan, bedside commode, 
or in a collection device placed into a regular toilet. The person must not urinate at the same time the stool sample is being collected. Toilet paper must not be placed in the collection device. Both of these actions will change the test results. When collecting a specimen, check the order. Confirm the order is for a clean catch midstream for urinary tract infection. When collecting the urine or stool sample for testing, it is very important that the label with the person's, patient's, or resident's name and the unit number be placed where? On the container A, B, on the container lid, C, only on the lab request form, D, depends on your facility policy. A, on the container. The patient or resident's name and unit number should always be put on the container holding the specimen. It may also be put on the lid and will also be put on the lab request form. Putting the name on the container holding the specimen will help prevent errors from misdiagnosing or misidentification from urinary elimination. The urinary system consists of the kidneys, urinary bladder, ureters, and urethra. Blood is filtered by the kidneys forming urine. The blood is stored in the urinary bladder. As the bladder fills, we begin to feel the urge to urinate. The urine leaves the body through the urethra. Expression to the urinary elimination. The process of passing urine from the body is known by several terms, including urination, voiding, micturation. Patients or residents will have their own terms for urinating, such as peeing or passing water. When talking about urination, use the words that the person is familiar with. This is especially important when talking with children. How to position a bedpan. The narrow edge goes toward the feet like a regular toilet seat. When using a bedpan, raise the head of the bed as much as can be tolerated. Urinary elimination color and odor. In healthy people, urine is clear without cloudiness or particles. Pale yellow, straw colored, or dark golden amber in color with a slight odor. Color and odor. Foods and drugs can affect the color and odor of urine. When you're helping a patient or resident with urination, observe the urine and report any abnormalities to the nurse. Urine with an unusual odor or appearance could be a sign of illness or infection. Hematuria. A slight red tinge to the urine may indicate hematuria or presence of blood in the urine. Sometimes hematuria is occult, which means it's hidden, and it must be detected using a urinalysis. Factors affecting urinary elimination. Many factors influence a person's urinary pattern, including the amount of fluid a person drinks, the types of medication the person takes, the person's age, the person's lifelong elimination habits, a nursing assistant soon becomes aware of the urinary pattern that is normal for each person in her care. This knowledge allows her to recognize any changes that may occur. The ambulatory patient. The patient will have an order to collect urine and can use a toilet. The device used to collect urine in the toilet is called a commode hat. Urination frequency and nocturia. Frequency is the term used to describe voiding that occurs more often than usual. Frequency is often accompanied by feeling of urgency or the need to urinate immediately. Nocturia is the need to get up more than once or twice during the night to urinate to the point where the, the patient's sleep is disturbed. Dysuria is difficulty voiding that may or may not be associated with pain. Some people describe the discomfort they feel during urination as burning or cramping sensation. Dysuria is often associated with bladder infections, prostate problems, and some sexually transmitted diseases, STI. 
As CNA should know, a clean urinal can be placed inside the bedside table. Additional information. A person that urinates 300 cc's in 24 hours is called oligaria. A normal urine is considered to be clear and straw color. A temporary problem of urinary incontinence can be caused by a bladder infection. In a healthy person, urine should appear cloudy and amber colored, A, B, clear with strong odor, C, clear and straw colored, D, cloudy with a reddish tint, C, clear, straw colored. In a healthy person, urine is clear without cloudiness or particles. It is also pale yellow, straw colored, or dark gold amber in color with a slight odor. Measuring urine output. In a person maintaining good fluid balance, urine output is neither too high nor too low. Complications associated with urine output are oligaria, the state of voiding a very little amount over a given period of time. Polyuria is excessive output. Anuria is a state of voiding less than 100 milliliters of urine over the course of 24 hours. Measuring urinary output. People who have illnesses or take medications that may alter their body's ability to maintain healthy fluid balance will need to have their urine output measured regularly. Some people who are critically ill will have their urine output measured and recorded every hour, but most people in the healthcare setting have routine orders for their urine output to be measured and recorded each shift. Measuring urinary output, the process. If a person uses a regular toilet, you will need to remind the person to void into a specimen collection device, a commode hat. And also tell them to call you after he or she has finished voided so that you can measure and record the amount of urine. Specimen collection devices, urinals, and the drainage bags used with urinary catheters often have markings on them to measure urinary output very easily. Urinary output can be measured by pouring it into a graduate container. Measuring urinary output. If the urine output is one of your residents or patients that is being monitored, you will need to keep a record of the amount of urine passed at each voiding. This can be done using an intake and output INO flow sheet, which has spaces to record the amount of each individual voiding. To obtain at the end of the shift amount, simply add the individual amounts and record in the total appropriate space. Providing catheter care. Because bacteria can be introduced into the body both when the urinary catheter is inserted and after it is in place, urinary tract infection in catheterized people are one of the most common nosocomial infections. In an effort to reduce the risk of nosocomial infection, and people who are catheterized, many facilities require catheter care to be provided routinely. Urinary catheterization, emptying urine drainage bags. Urine drainage bags are routinely emptied and the urine measured at the end of each shift. Urine drainage bags should also be emptied if they are full. Leg bags need to be emptied more frequently because they are smaller and hold less urine. Urinary catheterization, preparing for removal of an indwelling catheter. Use of an indwelling catheter can lead to temporary urinary incontinence when the catheter is removed because the lack of activity can decrease the muscle tone of the bladder. To prepare the bladder for removal of the catheter, it is common to clamp off the tubing of the catheter for a period of time to allow the urine to fill the bladder. The tubing is then unclamped and the urine is allowed to drain from the bladder. The procedure is repeated over a period of time when the, the, the intervals between clamping and emptying become more increasingly longer. Then the catheter is removed and the person is allowed to void normally. When a person has an indwelling catheter, where should the drainage bag be placed? A. Wherever is comfortable for the patient. B. Attached to the bed. C at the same level as the bladder, D below the bladder. D below the level of the bladder. The catheter bag should always be hung 
below the level of the bladder to allow gravity to help with drainage of the urine away from the body. Answer the call light promptly as the patient can fall when getting out of bed. Offer a bedpan as quickly as possible. After hip replacement surgery and the patient cannot get out of bed, use a fracture pan to help with elimination. Urinary incontinence. The inability to hold one's urine or the involuntary loss of urine from the bladder. Temporary incontinence can result from a bladder infection or after an indwelling catheter that has been placed um, for a long time is removed. Permanent urinary incontinence is a decreased muscle tone in the bladder or muscles that support the bladder and occurs maybe after childbirth or from obesity. Also, uh, permanent urinary incontinence can be caused from injuries or illnesses that affect the spinal cord, the brain, or the nerves that control bladder function. And lastly, dementia can cause permanent urinary incontinence. It can be emotionally devastating to be incontinent of urine. Having wet clothes or smelling like urine can be very embarrassing. Increased risk for developing skin problems and also for falling. Caring for a person who is incontinent of urine can be frustrating and emotionally draining. Incontinence is the factor that most often leads to family members to have a relative admitted to a long-term care facility. There's different types of incontinence of urine. Stress incontinence, the involuntary release of urine from the bladder when one coughs, sneezes, or exerts himself. Urge incontinence, an involuntary release of urine right after the feeling of a strong urge to void. Functional incontinence occurs in the absence of physical or nervous system problems affecting the urinary tract. Overflow incontinence occurs when the bladder is too full of urine. And reflex incontinence occurs when there is damage to the nerves that enables the person to control their urination. Urinary incontinence, managing urinary incontinence. There are available products. There's incontinence pads, briefs, and condom catheters. Bladder incontinence training is useful with certain types of incontinence. Temporary or permanent catheterization may be necessary. For privacy, ensure that a curtain or door is pulled closed if the patient is using a bedside commode a urinal or a bedpan. Urinary incontinence, managing incontinence, and briefs and pads. They're specially made to absorb and they hold, uh, hold it away from the person's skin. It's placed inside the underpants to prevent wetting of clothes and to draw the moisture away from the body. Bed protectors are used to help keep the bed linens and mattress dry and wick the urine away from the person's skin from bedridden individuals. Incontinence brief tend to fit closely, difficult for air to reach the skin. Switching between briefs and bed protectors help expose the skin to air at night. And a nursing assistant must make sure that these incontinence products are changed frequently and that the urine is clean from the skin wherever the urine change occurs. A tube that is not a urinary catheter. PEG tube, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube. Condom catheters. A condom catheter consists of a soft plastic or rubber sheath tubing and a collection bag for the urine. The sheath is placed over the penis and the collection bag is attached to the leg. Condom catheters. The urine flows through the tubing into the collection bag, allowing the man to urinate at will. The condom must fit the man's penis and should be fastened securely enough to prevent leaking but not so snugly as to restrict circulation. Adhesive material on the inside of the condom allows for a good seal or the condom is secured with elastic tape applied in a spiral fashion to allow for changes in the size of the penis. The use of a condom catheter requires good skin care the penis must be cleaned and the condom apparatus changed daily. 
Managing bladder training. Bladder training is commonly used to help people relearn how to control their urinary elimination patterns. For example, a person may be encouraged to use the bedpan, urinal, or commode as, at scheduled times. Scheduling of elimination helps to promote regular emptying of the bladder. The primary goal is for the person to be able to control involuntary urination. If this is not possible, then the person may still at least be able to get to the bathroom in time to avoid accidents. In healthcare, there may be interference with normal elimination. The patient may be embarrassed about needing to help or having to use the bedpan or bedside commode. Urinary incontinence can be an emotional problem for family members. True or false? True, because caring for an incontinent patient can be so emotionally trying and time consuming. Incontinence is a factor that most often leads family members or relatives to be admitted to a long-term care facility. Bowel elimination. The digestive tract consists of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Bowel elimination, the digestive system. The rectum is actually part of the large intestine. The large and small intestines are sometimes referred to as bowels. From the stomach, the chyme passes slowly into the small intestine. Where the more digestion occurs, nutrients and fluids are absorbed, and then it passes into the large intestines. The food and fluids that we take in are broken down into smaller pieces and mixed together in the stomach, forming partially digested food and fluid mixture as known as chyme. Small and large bowel intestine. Bowel elimination and the digestive system. Wave-like muscular movements called peristalsis move the chyme through the intestines. Finally, the chyme reaches the last part of the large intestine called the rectum. At this point, all of the nutrients have been removed, and what remains is a semi-solid waste material called feces. Bowel elimination and the digestive system. The presence of feces in the rectum stimulates the urge to defecate and the feces leave the body through the anus. Flatulence or gas is a natural byproduct of digestion, just as feces are. Bowel elimination color and odor. In healthy people, feces are soft, brown, and moist, and they have a distinct odor. Certain foods and medications can affect the color and odor of the feces. When helping a patient or resident with defecation, Observe the feces and report any abnormalities to the nurse. Feces with an unusual odor or appearance could be a sign of illness or infection. Factors affecting bowel elimination. The factors that influence a person's bowel elimination pattern include the amount of fluid they, they drink, the type of food he or she eats, the types of drugs they're on, and if they take narcotics because they can cause constipation, the person's age, the person's level of activity. Um, a nurse assistant soon becomes aware of the person's elimination pattern that is normal for each person in her care. This knowledge helps and allows her to recognize any changes that may occur. Problems with bowel elimination. Problems with bowel elimination are often seen in the healthcare setting, including diarrhea, constipation, fecal impaction, flatulence, Problems with bowel elimination, diarrhea. Diarrhea is a passage of liquid, unformed stool. Diarrhea may occur frequently and can be accompanied by abdominal cramping. If diarrhea is frequent or excessive, the loss of fluid from the body can quickly cause dehydration, especially in the young and the elderly. Diarrhea. When caring for a person with diarrhea, practice good infection control techniques. Answer call it quickly to provide access to the toilet, commode, or bedpan. Provide gentle, thorough skin care after each bowel movement to prevent skin breakdown. Make sure to record and report the frequency and the amount of each incident of diarrhea. Constipation occurs when the feces remain in the intestines for too long. 
The delay allows too much fluid to be reabsorbed by the intestines, resulting in hard, dry feces that are difficult to pass. Constipation. Risk factors for developing constipation include taking medications that slow peristalsis, not taking enough dietary fiber or fluids, not getting enough exercise, delaying having a bowel movement, and lack of privacy. Problems with bowel elimination constipation. There are many things a nursing assistant can do to help a patient or resident maintain a normal bowel function and prevent constipation. Encourage fiber-rich foods, encourage plenty of fluids, assisting with exercise, and ensuring privacy. Problems with bowel elimination constipation. If constipated and all other methods of promoting normal bowel function have failed, a laxative stool softener or fiber supplement may need to be used. A laxative is a medication that chemically stimulates peristalsis to move the fecal matter through at a faster pace. Stool softeners help to keep fluid in the feces and they're used to help prevent constipation for some people. Fiber supplements, tablets, or drink additives that can add bulk to the feces uh, causes it to hold fluid and prevents constipation. Problems with bowel elimination, fecal impaction. Fecal impaction occurs when constipation is not relieved. Feces build up in the rectum, become harder and harder as more fluid is absorbed until mostly it is impossible to pass feces normally. Impaction blocks the passage of normal stool, but liquid stool may go around the impacted mass. Problems with bowel elimination, fecal impaction. A person with an impaction is usually very uncomfortable. They might complain of abdominal or rectal pain or of liquid feces seeping out around the anus. Persons may have a uh, swollen abdominal area and they may have decreased appetite, possibly nausea and vomiting. Fecal impaction. If a person is thought to have a fecal impaction, the nurse will perform a digital examination. During the digital examination, a finger is inserted into the person's rectum to feel for the impacted mass. Digital means finger. Problems with elimination, fecal impaction. Impaction removed by using a finger to break up the impacted feces apart and scoop it out of the rectum piece by piece. A physician may also order the use of an oil retention enema or drugs to help remove the impaction. Digital removal of a fecal impaction is very uncomfortable and embarrassing. Many facilities require that a nurse remove an impaction, but your assistance will be necessary. If you are allowed to remove an impaction, make sure that you have been adequately trained for the procedure and that is part of your job description. Flatulence. Presence of excessive gas, which is flatulence, in the intestines causing the abdominal swelling and discomfort. Difficulty passing gas, flatulence, is because of lack of activity or recent surgical procedures. Getting out of bed and walking may be all that is needed to relieve you of the gas. If walking is not allowed, position the person on their left side. If it cannot be relieved with these methods, a nurse may insert a rectal tube to help release the gas to escape. Problems with fecal incontinence, in which is the inability for one to hold their own feces or involuntary loss of feces from the bowel and it can be temporary or permanent. Problems with bowel elimination, fecal incontinence. Uh, temporary fecal incontinence may be due to a severe case of diarrhea or an inability to get up and go to the restroom quickly enough or if the nursing assistant fails to answer the call lights promptly. There are diseases or injuries that affect the nervous system which can also result in temporary or or permanent fecal incontinence. A person who is unconscious will be incontinent of feces. A person who has dementia will develop fecal incontinence as the disease progresses. Problems with fecal incontinence, bowel training. Bowel training is very similar to bladder training and works to promote regular controlled bladder movements. Offering the commode or bedpan at regular scheduled intervals is a common method of bowel training. 
Bowel training is often started by keeping track of when an incontinent person usually has a bowel movement, then making sure to provide the appropriate toilet facilities during that time period. Concerns for long-term care. Normal effects of aging. Slower peristalsis, inactivity, decreased food and fluid intake, certain medications, low fiber diet, decreased sensory perception. Hey, hey, what you doing? Hi, Nani. Hi, Nani. Question. Exercise is helpful in maintaining adequate bowel function. True or false? True. Exercise will stimulate the muscles which encourage peristalsis, which will help move the chyme through the digestive system until it becomes feces and is eliminated through the rectum. Enemas. An enema is the introduction of fluid into the large intestine by way of the anus for the purpose of removing stool from the rectum. Enemas are used to relieve constipation, relieve fecal impactions, empty the intestine of fecal material before surgery or certain diagnostic tests. Sometimes enemas are used as part of bowel training. Enema types. Types of enema used in healthcare setting include cleansing en enemas, which are large volume, oil retention enemas, and commercial enemas, which are small volume enemas. Enema cleansing. They're primarily used to remove feces from the lower intestine. Tap water and saline. Enemas often soften the stool and stimulate peristalsis. Soap suds enemas consist of water and a small amount of very gentle soap called castile soap. The soap Solution irritates the lining of the bladder and it stimulates peristalsis. Enemas containing these solutions should not be given repeatedly because the intestines can absorb the solution, causing a fluid imbalance in the body. Oil retention enemas. They contain mineral, olive, or cottonseed oil. There's oil that lubricates the inside of the intestines and any stool that is present, making the stool easier to pass or remove. Oil retention enemas are useful for helping to remove fecal impactions. Administering enemas. They are ordered by a doctor and usually given by a nurse. Some facilities allow nursing assistants to administer enemas after adequate training. Nursing assistants must make sure that they follow proper procedure and the doctor's orders closely. The solution is correct for the person. The correct amount of solution is being given. Um, and the solution is at the proper temperature. Enema solutions that are too cool can cause abdominal cramping and pain, while solutions that are too hot can cause serious injury and possibly even death. When assisting the administration of an enema, make sure that the bed protector and the bed pan are in place, or that the path to the bedroom is clear. Administering enemas. Place the person on the left side the Sims position. In this position, the intestine is positioned to take the best advantage of gravity. After the enema has been administered, the person is asked to hold the solution for a specified amount of time and then to expel the solution. The doctor may order cleansing enema to be administered until clear, which means that enemas are given until the enema return from the person does not contain any fecal material. Administering enemas. Ask the nurse how many enemas are allowed to be given during a particular session. To make the procedure easier for the person, keep the person covered as possible, as much as possible to ensure that they have privacy. Having the person take a few slow, deep breaths as the enema tubing is being inserted into the rectum may help relax the person and make the insertion easier. 
rectal suppository, a small wax-like cone or oval that is inserted into the anus. The wax-like substance dissolves at body temperature, stimulating peristalsis or lubricating and softening the stool. Glycerin rectal suppositories are often used to help with bowel elimination before resorting to the enema. Some rectal suppositories also contain medication. These should only be inserted by a nurse. Stoma. Ostomy locations. Types of ostomy. Ileostomy, entire large intestine is surgically removed. The ileum is attached to the abdominal wall. New opening created to allow the passage of feces. A colostomy, part of the large intestine which is still present. The remaining part is attached to the abdominal wall. This may be temporary or permanent. Caring for a person with an ostomy. Points to remember, keeping the skin around the ostomy clean and dry to minimize the irritation. Attending to the client's privacy and modesty. Protecting the client and the client's bed from fecal matter. Wearing of proper personal protection equipment. Proper disposal of fecal waste and used equipment. Proper cleansing and drying of the stoma area. Effective application of the appliance. Appropriate documentation of the procedure. Most individuals adapt just easily to having an ostomy. True or false? False. For most people, having an ostomy is very difficult emotionally. First, the person must cope with having an illness or injury serious enough to require major surgery. Then, many people consider elimination as a very private activity. Having to wear a bag to collect feces on the outside of the body is very embarrassing for many people. The end.